May of 1812. A devastating incident. That led to the call for a miner's safety lamp in an explosion at a pit in the northeast, in which 92 people died. It was the rector who buried most of these people, that was, instrumental, in setting up a safety committee. And for help they turned to the most famous scientist of the time Sir Humphrey Davy. A brilliant chemist. But, this was a particularly challenging task. He had to come up with a frame that would light the way for miners underground but that wouldn't it set fire to flammable gases. Davy was the eldest son of middle-class parents, who owned an estate in Ludgeon, Cornwall, England. He was educated at the grammar school in nearby Penzance and, in 1793, at Truro. In 1795, a year after the death of his father, Robert, he was apprenticed to a surgeon and apothecary, and he hoped eventually to qualify in medicine. An exuberant, affectionate, and popular lad, of quick wit and lively imagination, he was fond of composing verses, sketching, making fireworks, fishing, shooting, and collecting minerals. He loved to wander, one pocket filled with fishing tackle and the other with rock specimens. He never lost his intense love of nature and, particularly, of mountain and water scenery. While still a youth, ingenuous and somewhat impetuous, Davy had plans for a volume of poems. But he began the serious study of science in 1797, and these visions fled before the voice of truth. He was befriended by Davy's Giddy, later Gilbert, president of the Royal Society, 1827-30, who offered him the use of his library in trade day and took him to a chemistry laboratory that was well equipped for that day. There he formed strongly independent views on topics of the moment, such as the nature of heat, light, and electricity and the chemical and physical doctrines of Antoine Lavoisier. On Gilbert's recommendation, he was appointed as a chemical superintendent of the pneumatic institution, founded at Clifton, to inquire into the possible therapeutic uses of various gases. Davy attacked the problem with characteristic enthusiasm, evincing an outstanding talent for experimental inquiry. In his small private laboratory, he prepared and inhaled nitrous oxide in order to test a claim that it was the principle of contagion, that is, caused diseases. He investigated the composition of the oxides and acids of nitrogen, as well as ammonia, and persuaded his scientific and literary friends, including Samuel Taylor Coleridge, Robert Southey, and Peter Mark Roger, to report the effects of inhaling nitrous oxide. He nearly lost his own life inhaling water gas, a mixture of hydrogen and carbon monoxide sometimes used as fuel. The account of his work, published as researches, chemical and philosophical, chiefly concerning nitrous oxide, or deflogisticated nitrous air, and its respiration, 1800, immediately established Davy's reputation. And he was invited to lecture at the newly founded Royal Institution of Great Britain in London, where he moved in 1801. With the promise of help from the British-American scientist Sir Benjamin Thompson, Count von Rumford, the British naturalist Sir Joseph Banks, and the English chemist and physicist Henry Cavendish in furthering his researches. His carefully prepared and rehearsed lectures rapidly became important social functions and added greatly to the prestige of science and the institution. In 1803 he was admitted a Fellow of the Royal Society and an honorary member of the Dublin Society and delivered the first of an annual series of lectures before the Board of Agriculture. This led to his Elements of Agricultural Chemistry, 1813, the only systematic work available for many years. For his researches on voltaic cells, tanning, and mineral analysis, he received the Copley Medal in 1805. He was elected Secretary of the Royal Society in 1807. Davy Early concluded that the production of electricity in simple electrolytic cells resulted from chemical action, and that chemical combination occurred between substances of opposite charge. He therefore reasoned that electrolysis, the interactions of electric currents with chemical compounds, offered the most likely means of decomposing all substances to their elements. These views were explained in 1806 in his lecture on some chemical agencies of electricity, for which, despite the fact that England and France were at war, he received the Napoleon Prize from the Institut de France, 1807.
This work led directly to the isolation of sodium and potassium from their compounds and of the alkaline earth metals magnesium, calcium, strontium, and barium from their compounds. He also discovered boron, by heating borax with potassium, hydrogen telluride, and hydrogen phosphide, phosphine. He showed the correct relation of chlorine to hydrochloric acid and the untenability of the earlier name, oxymuriatic acid, for chlorine. This negated Lavoisier's theory that all acids contained oxygen. He also showed that chlorine is a chemical element, and experiments designed to reveal oxygen in chlorine failed. He explained the bleaching action of chlorine, through its liberation of oxygen from water, and discovered two of its oxides. But his views on the nature of chlorine were disputed. Shortly after his return, he studied, for the Society for Preventing Accidents in Coal Mines, the conditions under which mixtures of fire damp and air explode. This led to the invention of the Miner's Safety Lamp, and to subsequent researches on flame, for which he received the Rumford Medals, gold and silver, from the Royal Society and, from the Northern Mine Owners, a service of plate, eventually sold to found the Davy Medal. After being created a baronet in 1818, he again went to Italy, inquiring into volcanic action and trying unsuccessfully to find a way of unrolling the papyri found at Herculaneum. In 1820 he became president of the Royal Society, a position he held until 1827. In 1823-25 he was associated with the politician and writer John Wilson Croker in founding the Athenaeum Club, of which he was an original trustee, and with the colonial governor Sir Stamford Raffles in founding the Zoological Society and in furthering the scheme for zoological gardens in Regent's Park, London, opened in 1828. During this period, he examined magnetic phenomena caused by electricity and electrochemical methods for preventing saltwater corrosion of copper sheathing on ships by means of iron and zinc plates. Though the protective principles were made clear, considerable fouling occurred, and the method's failure greatly vexed him. His Beccarian Lecture for 1826, on the relation of electrical and chemical changes, contained his last known thoughts on electrochemistry and earned him the Royal Society's Royal Medal. Davies' health was by then failing rapidly, and in 1827 he departed for Europe and, in the summer, was forced to re-sign the presidency of the Royal Society, being succeeded by Davies Gilbert. Having to forego business and field sports, Davy wrote Salmonia, or Days of Fly Fishing, a book on fishing, after the manner of Isaac Walton, that contained engravings from his own drawings. After a last, short visit to England, he returned to Italy, settling at Rome in February 1829. Though partly paralyzed through stroke, he spent his last months writing a series of dialogues, published posthumously as Consolations in Travel, or The Last Days of a Philosopher, 1830.